Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make your Dash apps much faster, from 10 times faster to 100 times faster using Patch. We're also going to see how to use a little bit of a duplicate callback um, to make your life easier. So here's an example of two uh, same, the exact same apps. Uh, this app is going to take a radio item to build a graph with uh, x-axis, line net, and then we're going to click on this button. This has about 150 um, thousand rows, and we click the button. And every time we click the button, um, this this price of this item is going to go up. Item number 12, I think, is going to go up 500, a thousand, just to fake or simulate maybe an API or data coming in from from a live data um, database where this price goes up or down. Now every time this price goes up and down, you'll see here uh, the amount of the seconds it takes. 122 milliseconds, 120 milliseconds, and so on and so on. Let's do the exact same thing with patch. Patch is something you'll see in just a second. I'm going to open this up and you'll see, if you look at this one right here, that if I click to update the data, it takes 10 milliseconds. 12. 11, 11, I think I got it down to, to 9 once. So 9 or 10 milliseconds compared to 120. This is 12 times faster uh, using uh, the patch class in, gla in, in Dash. Now, 10 times faster with when it's 100 milliseconds doesn't really mean a lot. But if you have a Dash app that takes, I don't know, uh, 2 minutes or 5 minutes to, uh, to refresh, with patch, it will take you 30 seconds. If you have something that takes uh, a minute and a half to refresh, with patch, it'll take about, what is that, like 10 seconds or 7 seconds? So this is a big difference when you're talking about a lot, a lot of data. And, and this could be um, uh, even exponentially even bigger. Uh, we are just dealing with, what is here, market sales. This is, has about 150,000 um, uh, rows. If we take this bigger one, this data comes from um, this Turkish market sales. I think the the whole data set is like 100 megabytes or maybe even bigger. But if we take the whole data set, which is pretty big, and then we compare it, we'll see, let's have it reload, refresh. We'll see that with the normal graph, when we update the button, It takes, I think it could take like, okay, 228 milliseconds. 228, 228. Let's do it with patch. 11 milliseconds. So it's still the same amount of time, 11 or 10 milliseconds, compared to 228. This is what, that's like 20 times difference, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. The more data set you use, the, the, the bigger the data set, the more time it's going to take for the normal way of doing things but it's going to stay the same amount of time for a patch. Now, why is that? Let's look into it. I'm going to, if you want to follow along, going to GitHub, you'll see in this link, I'll put this under the video, all the files that I'm using. I'm looking at normal graph and faster graph. So if you look at normal graph right here, you'll see that we just, in the first callback, we just build a graph, normal, you know, just have our graph here, nothing special happening. But then in the second callback, We'll take the button, and whenever we click on the button, we're going to update uh, this row or this item, item on index 12. We're going to update the y-axis, which is the price, to this new number, 500, 500 and, uh, 600 and 700, then 800, and so on and so on. But in this case, we are transferring the whole figure from the browser back to the server, and then the server back to the browser. And that's a lot of... Uh, data that is going back and forth from the browser to um, to the server. So come in patch with patch with the faster graph.py file instead of using the figure or passing in the figure in the state, we're just going to take the button and whenever we click on the button, we're just going to create this patch class or instantiate it and then we're going to update it this way. Isn't that pretty cool? 
instead of the figure, we'll just put the put the patch figure. So let's see how we do this. Now this seems like oh, okay, um, pretty interesting. But how do I go into what is data zero, y twelve? What does all this mean? And you're right, it is pretty complicated the first time you look at it. So the best way to learn how to use patch is the following. You cannot you cannot do this. Print patch figure object you cannot do this patch is just an object is just it's it's a set of instructions it's just telling the browser um, trigger the callback execute the callback and then pass this set of instructions back to the browser the output to update in this case update the figure but you need to know how to create this my recommendation is when you're working with the patch and when you want to update something in the output because the patch always updates the component property of the output try to print out the output um, to see how to dig into the to find the the, the 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 item you want to update so first step is you go into your um, your app and you say okay what do I want to update here I can use patch for this but I need to find what I need to update. In this case, I want to update one data point, one data point on the y-axis. I want to update the price of a certain data point, right? So we'll go back to our file, our faster.graph file, and we'll say, you know what? We want to update, in this case, uh, this data, this market sales has a bunch of, every product has an ID. I want to update this ID right here. But I don't know what row is this ID on. Like, where is this ID? So I'll go into here. Let's make this a lot smaller so it's easier to work with. I'm going to do that. So to you, you go to NumPy. We'll do NP where the data frame ID equals 324 because I want this product number. In this case, it's on uh, row number 12 or trace number 12. Right. So now that I know that it's on row number 12, now my recommendation is if you want to update something inside the figure take the figure and build it in your global variable build it here above the layout build it on the very top just for testing purposes you're not going to keep this you can erase this but it's just for testing and to figuring out the figure you want to find out where is this data point inside the figure that you want to update so if you print it out i'm building the scatter plot and i'm printing out the figure uh, rerun and now we'll see that once I print out the figure here I have the whole data set the whole figure figure right here and then I have data and we know that we want to update um, one of these data points on the price axis data point number 12 or the trace number 12 so I have to go into I have to go inside the figure I have to go inside here because here it is the y-axis we have to go inside of here somewhere the 12th data point zero one two somewhere in here is a 12th data point so i have to go inside print fig data we'll go inside the data and then this gives us this list which has one full dictionary so we'll have to go inside this first and only dictionary the first and only item of the list which is item zero and then we have to go inside the y-axis right here and then we know that we want uh, data point number 12 so now we're going to reach data point number 12 somewhere in here like that right so if i reprint this i'll see that i get to data point number 12 3.45 and if you want to go back to your data set 300 the id 324 has a price of 3.45 so we know we got the right data point and now that we have this this is how you can use patch you go in here like that you copy it let's x this out because we don't need this hash hash it out and then we'll go in here and we'll do this but instead of fig we just replace fig with patch figure that is how and then we update with the number we want to update it let's say with uh, the number 950 instead of this number right and that's it and then we return the patch figure and that is how you update a certain data point inside a figure. Let's go here, refresh, open it, 
update takes nine milliseconds and this is now at 950 price tag just like we said all right so that's my 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 strongest recommendation build the figure outside draw, drill into the figure find the data point you want to update and then it replace replace the figure with patch figure let's see how we do something similar or how to work with uh, AG grid uh, table All right so we're gonna save this close close let's open the normal table and the faster table now the, this is going to work if you download this from my uh, GitHub. These two will work. The normal graph and normal table, uh, normal graph and faster graph, is not going to work for you because it's using the um, the market CSV uh, file, market sales, which is on my computer. But I did not upload it here because it's like 30 megabytes, um, so it won't work. But the table will work for you. Let's look at the table right now table and then the faster table let's see the difference 8004 we're going to update california to like that oh the data set is very small let's make the data set a lot bigger let's make it 20,000 times eight let's make it 150,000 rows when the data set is very very small you're really not going to see a difference but when the data set is bigger that's when you start seeing a big difference between the normal speed, the normal dash, and the dash with um, with patch. Don't forget to download patch here above to um, install it. Not install, but call it. Call this method in the importing section. Okay, so we have this one. Let's take that one. So with the normal non-patch, it takes about almost 800 750 uh, milliseconds now if we go with, with using the patch let's update this to 500 it's taking us 93 88 90 so about 90 versus 750 that's almost 10 times faster that's about eight nine times faster right so how do we do this how do we get this to be a lot faster here again in the older version or the normal version we are reading the whole data set row data is the property of the quick start grid right it's this one right here where you take all the information of the ag grid you read the data set or the data of the ig grid as data and then we go into these three traces these three traces equal california and then we update the data in those three traces this column to the new number right um, whatever whatever input this was 500 and then we return this data back from the server to the browser to the output but this is just using the regular uh, no no patch here we're using the patch you see we're instantiating with patch class update uh, grid data we'll just call it update grid data you can call it anything you want and we replace instead of data you see here how we put this so instead of data we'll replace it with update grid data like this that's all we do and then we go into the x this is zero and then eight and then 16 and we update the solar panel to the new and we return this to the row data so this also is not like it took me time to figure this out the best way to do this is um, to figure out first what are you trying to update i want to update based on user interaction or based on data set that's coming in from an api database i want to update a certain row let's say row zero row uh the, the, the number of solar plants of california so first i have to find out First, I have to find out where is this uh, California? What what ID is this on? Right? Let's take a, a smaller data set so easier to to visualize. So I want to find out. Assuming state chosen, this is the drop down, the value. Assuming somebody chose California here. Okay, zero, eight, and sixteen. This is where this is where the uh, California uh, rows are zero eight and 16 right 
And then we can take this whole list. In this case, we didn't give it a name, and we just put it inside of here, right? So we'll just say new list equals like that. And I'll just say for x in new list, update these data points. Now, how do we go in there? The best way to go in there is to, again, build, like you remember in the last time we built our figure up here, like that. Here, above the layout, I would recommend build the AG, AG grid, grid outside your layout as a global variable, just for testing purposes. Print the grid, and let's see what we get. We're printed out, and now we get this whole line of, um, that has column definitions, column definitions, and it also has row data. If you go somewhere in here, where is it? Row, row data. You'll see that this one has row data right here, and it has a list of dictionaries. And every every dictionary is one row, right? Like right here. First dictionary is one row, California. Second dictionary is a second row, Arizona. So in this case, we know that to get to that row data, we have to do grid dot row data to access the row data and we want to go into the first trace assuming we only have california once let's say it's only eight eight rows we go into the first uh, dictionary and we update the number of solar power plants we want to update this part right here from 289 solar power plants from 289 to 500. this is in row zero we could do the same thing on row Eight and row 16, all right? Like that. So once we know how to how to update the grid, we just gotta copy the whole thing. Let's copy all of this. And then replace it with the patch. So we go in here. Let's update only row zero. Like that. Like that. And instead of grid, we'll use update grid data right here, like that because we're going to update in the output the row data. These are instructions to update row data. So we don't need to include that. And now, if we update it to 1,000, now we'll get 1,000. And it's only going to take a couple milliseconds. All right. Well, I hope this was clear. Uh, patch is not... The, it's pretty advanced, so if you do have any questions, please, under uh, YouTube uh, video, just ask me in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Um, this can really make your, your Dash app a lot faster. And it's usually uh, used with duplicate callback. You see here in the faster graph, first we built the graph right here, and then in the second callback, we're using patch. But we're updating the same the exact same output, you see? It's the exact same output in both callbacks. So you need to use allow duplicate equals true to be able to update the exact same output in a second callback, or a third or a fourth. All right. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out, and I hope to see you next time.